In boxing, we get a great insight into what is being said between the fighters and their trainers between rounds. Mike Tyson, baby. Mike Tyson. Hey, Let's, go. Mike Tyson. Let's go, baby. Hey, In this series, we take a close look at those vital 60 seconds and also show you other memorable moments that took place in a boxing corner. One of the most memorable and telling moments of Joe Calzaghe's one-sided beatdown of Jeff Lacey came at the end of round two. Calzaghe returned to his corner and told his father and trainer, Enzo, exactly what he thought of Lacey's power and ability. You can't punch shit. I know you can't punch, punch shit, shit, right? Careful, yeah, man. There's something where come up with. Have a drink. Don't do it with your ass pimp down there, right? Okay? Oh, shit. Stick the jab off. At the end of the fourth round, Chris Eubank Jr.'s corner, consisting of his father, Chris Eubank Sr., and trainer Ronnie Davis, never said a single word. Let's see if we can uh, listen in. It'll be difficult for Chris Eubank to say what needs saying in a minute. Here we go. Eubank Sr. leaned over his son before stepping back and posturing while Davis applied grease to Eubank Jr.'s face. Well, at the moment, do not adjust your set. Nothing is being said. For once, a man of few words. Well, <laughs> never expect the expected. <laughs> Ronnie Davis hasn't said a word either, and Chris is just standing there looking at his son. <laughs> oh, get your head around that, Barry. <laughs> After an action-packed sixth round of toe-to-toe -to -toe exchanges against George Groves, Carl Froch's reaction was heard when he returned to his corner. He has outfought Carl Froch in that bus. He completely outfought him. And he picks every one of those shots so cleanly and accurately. What a nightmare this has been for Carl Froch. If you watch part two of this series, then you remember Teddy Atlas guiding Michael Moore to the heavyweight championship of the world against Evander Holyfield. There's Teddy Atlas. He's got a heavyweight champion now. After a shock upset defeat to George Foreman seven months later, Moore regained the IBF title in 1996 when he beat Axel Schultz. It is a split decision victory for Michael Moore who reclaims the IBF heavyweight title. In Moore's first title defense, he took on the IBF's number one ranked contender, Francois Botha. Despite being shaken by a fierce combination in the third round, Botha was able to neutralize Moore for much of the first six rounds. Botha assured me he's going to push Michael Moore back. When he does this, it's okay. He gets, he gets the better of Michael a little bit. Right hand. They're both taking a lot of punches. Straight right. Now, a combination by Moore working to the face. Back comes Botha and a left hook by Moore. Oh, what a furious exchange. Well, do something now. Don't wait till tomorrow because tomorrow will be too late. Do you hear me? But as a southpaw, he oh. just kind of turned, slanted it in. Botha comes right back, Bobby, with a straight right of his own. A little right uppercut to the jaw of Mora. Well, both is a gutsy guy. He didn't come here to lose, so now we have a fight. And the crowd really getting behind the challenger, Botha. Botha hammers away. Back comes Mora with a right hook. Back comes Botha with a straight right. After Mora was tagged by numerous right hands from Botha in the seventh round, Atlas brought referee Mills Lane over to the corner and threatened to have Lane stop the fight if Mora didn't start performing better. I swear to God, I will have this man stop the fight if you don't want to fight. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Do you understand that? Michael, do you understand that? Look, if you freaking don't want to fight, then you freaking might as well stop right now. Are you going to stop fighting? You're behind in this fight. Damn it. Take this. You're behind in this fight. Now he's, he's got to keep going. He doesn't. Yeah, he allows Botha to come back with a right hook. Botha with another right hook to the head. Three minutes later, Atlas still wasn't pleased and called on Mora to win the fight for his young son. You're not listening. You got 12 minutes left. That's four rounds. What you do in the next 12 minutes 
you're going to have to live with for the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years of your life. Your little son. He's not going to be told that his son beat Hollyfield. He's going to be told he beat lost to a guy named Botha. Francois Botha, who was thought of with no talent. You understand? Anything you feel, he's feeling the same, but worse. You're just not digging. You hear me? And you can't talk about all the things you talk about if you don't perform. Now listen, do you want to live with that the rest of your life, no. Michael? It's going to happen. you got 12 minutes. You're behind. You understand? It's got to start here. In rounds 9 and 10, Moore found the extra gear that Atlas was looking for, and Botha started to tire under the increased pressure. That's something we also have to keep an eye on. Oh, Moore with a quick straight right hand. Now he backs Botha up. Botha has his hands down low. Moore works in his head. Botha looking exhausted with a minute left in round nine. He has to go about nine more minutes. A good left straight hand there by Michael Moore. Punches like there and a counter right couple of rights by Michael Mora but what keeps Botha up in the 11th round Mora dominated the action and knocked Botha down twice the second knockdown came on the bell at the end of the round and saved Botha Botha is out of it there's another straight right hand it's the jab of Michael Mora doing the damage he goes into the ropes he goes down Botha's reprieve was short-lived, and Moore ended the fight after just 18 seconds of the 12th round. I don't think Botha's going to finish this round if Michael Moore stays on track. Bill Flay, this fight's over, steps in and stops the fight early in round 12. And Michael Moore gets the embrace from Teddy Atlas. Great, great fight, good finish. At the end of round seven, Floyd Mayweather's father and trainer, Floyd Sr., didn't think that his son was paying attention to his instructions, but he was proven wrong. Doing a good job, man. I want you to box, box, me. Box, right behind it, okay? Still by me and drop your right hand, okay? Boy, you ain't paying attention, man. Good job, box, box. Didn't touch me, box. There you go. Before the 12th and final round, Keith Thurman's trainer, Dan Birmingham, gave Thurman's opponent, Jan Zavik, a backhanded compliment. Great performance. Fucker got a hard head. Franchon Cruz de Zern's weave became loose in the ninth round of a world title fight against Alejandro Jimenez, and the referee called for a timeout so she could fix it. At the end of the round, trainer Barry Hunter ordered his corner team to take the weave off Desern's head. You want that or you want that? You want that or you want the motherfucking type? Hey, get your shit off her head now. Although initially reluctant, Desern accepted the decision and Hunter then gave her a motivational slap on the cheek. Take it off. Look up. Look up. You want that or you want the belt? Vladimir Klitschko was criticized by trainer Emmanuel Stewart for not fighting aggressive enough in the late rounds of his fight against Eddie Chambers. You're not throwing enough punches. You go boop boop and then you just slip and you and you jump back and you and you will jump back. Let the shots go. You got a big man. You gotta you gotta punch. You got to let punches go. I mean, you, you know, this is another brother off. It's another problem out there, but you're letting them go because you don't punch. You just, you got to punch, just let them go. Before the 12th and final round, Stewart demanded Klitschko to go for the knockout and not settle for a decision victory. I know he's gonna run to survive, that's why we needed to get him out of there. There's no way he should be going no 12 rounds, but you, no way. But you'll stop, you won't let the punches go, you, and then you wait, you wait, you get your weight, you wait, you wait. If you miss a punch, you got to throw the punches. Your volume of punches is too low. You're not punching. And it's not like you're tired. You just got to let your punches go, let him in. Just let them go. This round is going to be hard. He's going to run. That's all he's going to do. You, let him, you never let him get to the 12th round. He's going to run down. But you got to punch. Try him in there. Relax. Okay, well, you got try. to try. You got to. I'm doing you it. do not need to have another I'm bullshit decision. I'm telling you. Fired up Klitschko came out throwing more punches in the 12th round than he had in the previous 11 rounds and brutally knocked Chambers out with a left hook. But Emmanuel Stewart wants Klitschko to finish off this guy. Right hand for Klitschko is a good one. Trey 
Jordan, but so little time to do it. Fish goes trying to finish it here. Goes for the big right again, but didn't connect as he would have wanted, but he's piling it on that Fish go. Close to the final minute. This is what Manny and Sue has wanted all along. Big left hand. It up with the right, but he needs combinations here as he tries to finish Chambers. Oh, left hand Chambers is down! What a punch that was! What a punch from Vladimir Klitschko! Stunning finish! Klitschko holds on to his title. The 2005 fight between Jose Luis Castillo and Diego Corrales produced one of the greatest comebacks ever seen in a boxing ring. After nine rounds of non-stop action, Castillo knocked Corrales down twice in the 10th round with vicious left hooks. Great title fight. Oh, what a left hook by Castillo and Corrales is down! Each time, Corrales spat his mouthpiece out and looked beaten but each time he surprisingly beat the count and was sent to his corner where trainer Joe Goosen put his mouthpiece back in and told him to get inside on him. Time! Come in! Come they in. get the mouthpiece put back, in, he was in. up at eight. Put it in! Let's go, get inside on him. Oh. Joe Goosen go. trying to get involved as Corrales hits the canvas. Castillo looking to finish it here, he goes down again! Takes the Three. mouthpiece out! Four. To make matters even worse now, in a get on him now. dreadful in, round go. for Corrales. Down two times here in the tenth. At least pushed him back. That was astonishing, and he hurts him with a hook. Corrales comes back, a straight right. Now Castillo against the ropes. Unbelievable. Evan Flow, after being on the canvas twice here in the tenth. And Castillo steps back. Corrales waiting. Castillo's in trouble. Weak steps in, and the fight is over. Corrales with a remarkable, dramatic turnaround to win this fight. Unbelievable. Diego Corrales said he would go through hell before losing this fight. He may have. In 2014, Sergio Martinez and Miguel Cotto met for the WBC Ring Magazine and Lineal Middleweight titles. A flurry of left hooks from Cotto put Martinez down in the opening minute of the fight. Cotto going to the body. Down goes Martinez. Martinez had a history of problems with his right knee, and after Cotto sent him to the canvas twice more, it was clear that he had re-injured it. It seemed like that right, that right knee may be giving him some problems now too. Look how he's dragging that right foot. What a cook lands again for Cotto. Oh, Martinez's out. leg is gone. He's out. Martinez's leg is gone. Second knockdown, and Sergio Martinez does not look as though the knee is functioning at all. Yeah, his knee is gone. His knee is definitely gone. That third knockdown. His knee is gone. That right knee is out of here. Five. Six. Nine. And Martinez manages to make it out of the round. But Miguel Cotto is already completely in charge. Martinez tried to make the fight competitive after the first round, but struggled to get any momentum on his punches and almost went down or wobbled whenever Cotto landed a clean punch. Cotto's outboxing him, and he still has the faster hands. He's winning the exchanges when they trade. In the ninth round, Martinez was ruled to have gone down for a fourth time when his knee touched the canvas. That is a knockdown. That's the fourth knockdown of the fight. By this point in the fight, Martinez's right eye was cut and he had lost every round. Between rounds 9 and 10, Martinez's longtime trainer, Pablo Sarmiento, decided to call off the fight against the will of Martinez, who begged for one more round. Champion, you need to know responding, champion. One more, one more, please, one more. Champion, you need to know responding. Sergio, I'm gonna stop this one, Sergio. Sergio, you are the best for me. 
You are the best. You'll always be our best champion, Sergio. I'm going to stop this one. I'm going to stop it, Sergio. No, I'm going to stop it, Sergio. Not you. And Martinez is going to retire. And that was the right thing to do there. 100%. Wow. The life story of Matthew Saad Muhammad is compelling and inspiring. Abandoned on the street as a child, he turned his life around to become one of the greatest light heavyweight champions of all time.